All right, this is the comments we always discuss a two lemma. Uh, that's the general lemma. It's another technical lemma, but you, but the lemma which helps simplify lots of arguments in analysis. And I'll give you the demonstration how this works on on the on the example of health inequality. So first, uh, let me just state the lemma. The lemma says that if I have a sequence of functions from a one and another function and another function which is measurable uh, such that the sequence is a function it's a non-negative function then I also have that the inf, uh, the lower limit or lim inf of this sequence uh, equal to my function f almost everywhere almost everywhere on my universal set x and I have that uh, the limit of the integrals of these non-negative functions is also a finite number. That's if all of these conditions are met, we have a sequence of integral functions, non-negative, such that the limit of is a measurable function, or in fact limit is always a measurable function of the measurable functions, uh, and such that the limit of the integrals across the sequence is a finite number, then the limit function is also integrable and in fact you have control over the integral of this function by the number m where m is this number so in fact the function uh, the Fatou lemma gives you the nice tool how to establish integrability of the limit by integrability of these elements in the sequence something Riemann integration never had and here how people normally use it so uh, just recall for you that we prove with you the inequality like that. If I have two functions f and g from p, lp and lq, where p and q are connected by this relation, and they are bigger than one, then we prove with you the whole inequality of this of this type. In fact, uh, in, in my second, I gave two proofs to this. One was the elementary proof, and that has nothing to do with the present discussion. Uh, yet, after that, I gave another proof, which is based on the very deep results in complex analysis, like a maximum principle or free, uh, the free alliance lemma. Uh, in, in that proof, we, in fact, prove the inequality, the resulting held inequality, under more restrictive assumptions that both functions f and g are bounded, and one of them has finite support. Yes. Now, with the help of the Fatou lemma, we can remove these assumptions and extend this inequality now to a general case of two functions f and g like this. Now, the reason, uh, the way we do it is like this: we fix an epsilon like this, one on m, from my previous consideration, from my previous comments on approximations of functions in LP. I claim that there is a sequence f n, which is also p summable and now bounded, and the sequence g n which is again p summable and bounded such that they approximate my function f in the function g with a given accuracy epsilon with a given accuracy one on n they also both have finite support if, uh, i mean individually every element in this sequence and every element in this sequence yeah, has finite support uh, yes um, now that's the Consequence of the approximation technique we discussed. I discussed with you in my earlier comments. I, there was another consequence in the approximation technique, which says that if you have the approximation in the norm of LP class, then this the same approximation gives you the limit in the measure topology. So that's what I claim now from the from the, my previous comments that the sequence of n converges to f in measure topology and sequence gn converge to g in measure topology uh, via via our general relations between the measure topology and pointwise convergence we know that there is a subsequence such that the subsequence converge to f almost everywhere in the subsequence we can in fact choose the identical subsequence for both f and g and the subsequence of g is converge to g almost everywhere so we almost there. And the other thing which I will claim via triangle inequality, I can say that the P norm of Fn via triangle inequality controlled by something like this. And that is 
of this structure because this difference is controlled by 1 on n. And similar, similar statement can be made about the gn sequence. So all of these lines of approximation are lines of argument where we constructed this special approximation which converged to my f and g pointwise and which actually for which you can exercise the control over the p norm and over the q norm. This is a standard way of doing things in LP and LQ. Plus, we also know that the Fn and Gn are finite support. So, in fact, in fact, we can use my restrictive version of all the inequality for the function Fn and the function Gn. If I do that, that's what I will have. The product of these two, they are non-negative if you think of absolute value rather than functions F and G in themselves. This is controlled by this. This is the version of the Hilde inequality. Well, this is a typo, which I will fix in a second. This is the version of my Hilde inequality for this restrictive case. Fn, k, and g, and k, they are bounded with finite support. Now, the right-hand side here can be controlled by this piece and by this piece. Is a control. And the other thing which I will observe that the limit for this function, of this product of these two, due to this conclusion, limit equal to absolute value of f and g. So by the Fatou lemma, the product of f and g, or the absolute value of f and g, is integrable, and the integral can be controlled by the number m, which is this one, where you drop these two fractions. So the Fatou lemma, in fact, finishes your proof down to this. These lines, let me just fix this typo first. These lines, this is a standard routine way of approximating things, and the actual content of the proof is here. When we prove the inequality for this restrictive class of functions within the larger LP and LQ class. And here we really had real substance because we used this advanced complex analysis method. For more details, please see my comments on on free lines lemma.